So we have a 34 year old gentleman. He has difficulty in swallowing and blurring of vision. He also have mild shortness of breath. And he returned to home after seven day Caribbean trip where he snorkeled, ate locally cured fish, hiked in a forest. Well, temperature is normal, BP is normal. His oral mucosa is dry, speech is slurred, pupil are dilated and react sluggish. Neck muscle are weak, difficulty holding his head, muscles tend 1 by 5 in the upper limb, 5 by 5 in the lower limb. And what the next best step in the management of this patient? Well, the best answer of this is equine and toxin therapy. But we should know what the diagnosis is. Most likely he has foodborne botulism. is a potentially life-threatening condition. It is caused by injection of food contaminated with botulinum toxin. Well, how this toxin comes? By germination of Clostridium botulinum spores. And classically they are, they germinate in the caned food. So, improperly cane food, cured fish provide appropriate environment for spore germination and ingestion result in absorption of a preformed toxin. Toxin is preformed. Now, come the question. We have seen the patient, he has neck weakness, dilatation of the pupil, okay, and even upper limb weakness is there. And we just learned it is due to all preformed toxin. Write down the answer. I have a question for you. What is the mechanism of action of this preformed toxin? It inhibits presynaptic acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction. So that's why it's going to cause muscle weakness. I have one more question for you. This symptom develop after how much time? And I have one more question for you. This is the botulism has preformed toxin. Tell me any bacterial infection which also has preformed toxin. So bacterial food poisoning, to be more precise, which has due to preformed toxin. So we have two questions at the moment. Write down the answer in your copy. Well, as far as bacterial preformed toxin causing food poisoning is Staphylococcus. Staphylococcus. Food poisoning. And as far as at what time it develops, it develops in within 36 hours. It's a preformed toxin. Prodromal symptoms include GI, discomfort, dry mouth and sore throat. Like in this case also, patient has dry mouth and sore throat are the prodromal features that we are getting in this patient. Well, ultimately, patient bilaterally cranial nerve palsies can develop, which can lead to dilated pupil, blurred vision due to fixed pupil dilatation. Diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, they are the four Ds, famous Ds, dilated people, diplopia, dysarthria and dysphagia, these are the classical four Ds. Facial weakness can be there, but the classical hallmark is descending weakness. It's such an important point. We have one more entity like GBS syndrome, Guillain-Barre syndrome where it is a type of ascending paralysis. So descending paralysis is a classical feature that we see in a patient of botulinum toxicity. That's why neck is weak and upper, upper limbs are weak. Respiratory failure can occur if there's diaphragmatic paralysis occur. 
well diaphragm is the one organ which is almost in the middle of the body so whether it is botulism where we have descending paralysis or Guillain-Barre syndrome where we have ascending paralysis diaphragm is in the middle both can both can involve both type of problem can involve diaphragm which can lead to respiratory failure okay well so if you are suspecting any patient with bottles of food poisoning check the toxin in the blood you take a blood sample check for check for toxin supportive care and you can you may gain give host drive antitoxin we can give to neutralize the toxin which is there in the blood well let's look into other option atropine and pyridoxine they are used in organophosphorus poisoning having feature of cholinergic excess bradycardia myosis bronchospasm vomiting diarrhea if you can see it is almost a reverse of the what the feature we got it okay there was a uh, midriasis people were dilated here we are getting myosis okay because it's all because of cholinergic toxicities there now when we use atropine they block the peripheral effect of acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptor and pyridoxine uh, aid in reactivation of acetylcholinesterase which is going to generate more and more acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction adoformum test the short acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor it improve muscle strength weakness in a patient of myasthenia gravis okay and that help in the, uh, making a diagnosis that we are dealing with the case of myasthenia gravis now myasthenia gravis we are well aware it happen in female and male now the question is in male myasthenia gravis at what age it occurs so write down the answer in male it is 6 to 8th decade in female it is in 20 to 40 years but in males it is 6 to 8 decade okay and they have fluctuating and fatigue weakness of the ocular movement also symptom are worsen in the evening fatigue is a classical feature of any myasthenia gravis but the more important is that we it is 6 to 8 decade well one more question for you question is which the malignancy is associated with very often associated with myasthenia gravis write down the answer thymoma every patient of myasthenia gravis should be investigated for thymoma option d intravenous methyl prednisolone that's not the treatment of botulism this we specially give in condition like multiple sclerosis which can also have can have muscle weakness okay and this is more in female around 15 to 50 50 year and patient classically has optic neuritis internuclear ophthalmoplegia and transverse myelitis there are important clinical feature that can happen in a patient of multiple sclerosis and the problem is disseminating in time and and space finally skin exam for attached ticks or oh, tick paralysis can lead to can cost can cause neurotoxin and neurotoxin by tick can lead to muscle paralysis in the saliva what the clinical features of this neurotoxin what it can do it can lead to classically paresthesia fatigue followed by ascending muscle weakness but how will you differentiate it from guillain barre syndrome so write down the answer again guillain barre also we have ascending type of paralysis here also we have ascending type of paralysis but how will you differentiate in this it is usually unilateral in guillain barre it is bilateral okay very and even if bilateral is there they usually have a not the same type of weakness 
वन लैग मे हैव मोर वीकनेस अदर मे हैव लेस सो इन सच केस यू टू सर्च फॉर द टिक्स एंड वन शू रिमूव इट रिकवरी इज वेरी फास्ट रिकवरी इज ऑलमोस्ट विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर पेशेंट रिकवर एंड मोर ओवर इन गिया बारे सिंड्रोम देर मे बी हिस्ट्री ऑफ डायरिया इन द पास्ट एंड दी इज नो सच हिस्ट्री इन टिक पैरालिस बट ए सिमेटिकल इज द वन पॉइंट बिकॉज गिया बारे सिंड्रोम इज नेवर यूनिटल इज ऑलवेज बायोलैट्रल अदरवाइज क्लिनिकली इट रिजेंबल लाइक द टिक पैरालिस रिजेंबल लाइक गिया बारे सिंड्रोम गोल्डन लाइन टू रिमेंबर tick bond botulism is a potential life threatening condition because it can involve um, food bond botulism is a potentially life threatening because it can involve the diaphragm caused by injection of food improperly cane food contaminated with botulinum toxin symptom typically occur within 36 hour of ingestion and bilateral cranial neuropathy followed by symmetrical descending type of muscle weakness is there well i hope you like the session just to inform you we have following courses for you smart medicine there are 350 hours of pre recorded video lecture of whole internal medicine it includes all super specialty and allied subject covering a to z including basic concept about every topic second we have tests and discussion there are more than 1000 question which with discussion of the questions sample question and discussion you saw in this session now third thing is medicine simplified which is a textbook of medicine harrison is the ultimate book to read medicine but it is too vast reading one page of harrison you need half an hour to understand you need 2 hours but you need only 2 minute to forget what was written in that page then what is the solution we have medicine simplified it's a textbook of medicine but so called mini harrison it's a summary of what you need to read from harrison the book is available in amazon also now these three things are more than enough for your md dnb medicine and family medicine final exam preparation need ss exam preparation you don't need to read any other book these three are complete in all the aspect for more detail you can contact at this number it's a mobile ad, as well as whatsapp and this is my personal email id anybody want to reach to me you can contact me at this email id thank you very much